Hello and welcome back to Point and Griff. It's part 13 of the Disco Elysium Motorix playthrough. Part 13, wow. So some of this is live, as you may have seen already, and some of this is pre-recorded just because the nature of life, time, schedules, and being completely honest, interest. It's not always great speaking to an audience of nobody when you're on a live stream. Um, so just wanted to do wherever I could try and record them pre-recorded. So quick recap since part 12. So I made the decision that so I'd come over to the fishing village and come to the decision I was going to head back because felt so there's some information on the eighth hardy that we don't seem to have at the moment um because there are certain story beats that we should be able to trigger speaking to the washer lady and going into this building here which weren't triggering so shivers said to look under the floorboards which is what i want to do and then speak to this lady a, a bit more about who comes over here because then we will find out some more about the 8th Hardy. Um, and once we figure out who the 8th Hardy is, we know who drives the truck, apparently runs the drug trade, uh, was also at the scene of the hanging. And it'll do a lot to help us with getting Titus Hardy on board. I mean, we're, we're pretty close with Titus as it is. But that will help a lot. Whoa. Got caught in the environment a little bit there. So I'm going to go in. All around you, rain falls on the great city of Rivershaw. <laughs> Rain drips from the eaves and flood. The spring thaw must be here. The snow is melting. <laughs> oh god, I've, I've like glitched the shivers chair. Looking up at the sky, cold water dripping from your hat. Hang on a hang on a second. We can't. That shivers check is too good to have have it glitched like that. So let's quickly forget that even happened. Nothing to see here. I hope it triggers again now. I mean, it should do. I guess my shivers has got high enough now that that it triggers. But it's um, it's an absolutely brilliant shivers check. So I don't want to spoil it by being stuck in the doorway of the whirling with that music playing because that check isn't just about what you get told it's quite it's quite cool how it um how it plays out here we go all around you rain falls on the great city of rivershaw rain drips from the eaves and floods the gutters washing the filth away so this is what I was talking about. You can't normally um, zoom out this far. And it's just, it's, the way it's presented is really, really cool. Hopefully now you see why it was worth going back and doing that. The spring thaw must be here. The snow is melting. Looking up at the sky, cold water dripping from your hat. Grey sky like great battleships, clouds colliding with one another. Rain falls down on the world. Humid, your coat shields you from the rain while the city shivers around you. Sheets of rain over the water, a flight of stairs leading into the ocean. Wave after wave washing the coast of Martinez, with its motorboats and gently swaying reeds. The ruins of a half-sunken sea fort crumble on an inlet. Beyond the Bay of Revachol, ghosts rise into the sky. 
The skyscrapers of La Delta, the financial district. Faint golden light seeps from the office windows. Urban coastline, rain dripping off etonite covered roofs. Cinder blocks left over from half finished construction. A defunct research and development building, once seized by revolutionaries. An old wooden church stands on stilts above the water. Coal City, end of all lines. Some really good uh, descriptions there of what you're seeing. Ghosts. Hang on, what was the exact line? It's a great sky, like grey sky, like great battleships, clouds colliding with one another. It's pretty, it's pretty beautiful. This is key. The ruins of a half-sunken sea fort crumble on an inlet. Beyond the Bay of Revachol, ghosts rise into the sky. So we saw this half-sunken sea fort when we looked through the little tourist telescope over here. In the uh, on the left hand side and uh, the washerwoman mentioned an old uh, building that no one's been able to get into so I talked about this last time it I think it's uh, interface in check and in all of my playthroughs I've never been able to open that door maybe you're not supposed to but um, it's always fascinated me but yeah um, ghosts rise into the sky so if you imagine a distant skyline shielded by grey clouds and rain they would look pretty ghostly I just thought it was a really cool way of describing it your hair is an oily mess flecked with ash from neighbouring coal plants smoke stacks rise somewhere in the distance the great gates of the industrial harbour are locked a chill runs down your back you shudder like an animal trying to shake water from its hide you shudder, looking down at your feet. Dirty rainwater runs veins into the plaza snow. Two green snakeskin shoes stand at attention on the mosaic paving of the plaza. Capeside apartments. Tower blocks crowd one another. 4.46 millimeter bullets still lodged in their war-torn stone walls. Hallways collapse from the mortar heads of a war that was lost long ago. Clothes lines go to waste in the rain. Radios play. A yard. Rain falls onto the roof of a woodshed. The lingering odor of decomposition mixes with that of damp soil. A traffic jam. Rain thrumming on the roofs of motor vehicles. Inside. Drivers watch water streaming down their windshields. The statue of a king shudders. He too is cold. The canal bridge has been raised. The road ascends. A raised motorway loops above the ghetto. Beneath its concrete columns, a sea of rooftops, woodwork and tar stretches northward. Four-story buildings as far as the rain can fall. The snows melt in Jamrock. Any DMX fans watching? I have a brother in the cut. Where the wood at? To be in Martinez, where no one goes, at the runoff point of a long forgotten canal, in the whitest part of town, in the shadow of the day the revolution fell. Standing in the rain, looking north, where Jamrock Rock City stretches inland. In the rain-swept distance above the rooftops of Jamrock, a repurposed silk mill stands perched above the motorway exit. Precinct 41 hunches in the rain. Your vision blurs. You wipe your face with your hand. The rain stings your eyes, making you look up and blink. Coalition hero statics hang like apparitions under the cloud cover. Way up there, where rain forms, rotors flutter silently. Your sight clears. Collapsed storm drains, old sewage systems flooded with rainwater. Hidden weapon caches from the revolution. 
doors leading down to Le Royale, the catacombs to which, for three centuries, they delivered the blue-blooded dead. This rain will not let up anytime soon. At least we are dressed for it. Let's keep moving. So interestingly, that shivers check, and I'm guessing it must be a timing thing. So we're on day three now. Um, so a little spoiler coming up. You can get that check on day one, right? If you have, if you let's say you go with a physique build, and. Um, like the minute you walk out the door it will it will trigger um and you can get a little backstory um that pops up a little bit like what esprit de corps does where it kind of goes off and tells you something that's going on in your old precinct right it gives you a little story that's going on uh, about some detectives you can venture down this little story with jean vic mayor back at precinct 41 who's asking some other detectives about where you are. He's like, has, any, has anyone seen him? Did you go out drinking with him uh, this week? You know, what, what's going on? We haven't seen him for like three days. He's still down in Martinez, etc. Now, because it's on day three and we've got two people um, that we loosely recognize in the whirling, I wonder if Shivers isn't necessarily showing you a story that's previously happened. It's connecting at that point with those people. But because they're now here, so this is Jean Vic Mare here. That sugary black rum. Oh, excuse me. Do you have something better to do than lust? Yes, we don't want the rum. Sorry. Electrochemistry. Um, so that's Jean Vic Mare. I forget the name of this lady. Um, Again? I can't believe this shit. He might be wearing a disguise. Yeah, see, there's parts of your brain that are like, I know this guy yes, from somewhere. Yes, of mine. But that's... John McMahon, who we will meet again later. But I'm just going to give Gart this stuffed bird. Can I help you? What is this thing? What, the interior decorating kind? You know, I'm sorry. This is actually a nice bird. A competent piece of taxidermy. Well, I can fix it to the plaque and have a new bird in the establishment, I guess. So, I don't know. Thank you. I'm going to go with thank you. I feel good about our work here today. It's all about the little things, like bringing people random stuffed animals. <laughs> no, you don't. It's not happening. He tries not to look at you. It's dangerous to acknowledge the karaoke man. It's for the... It's for no one. It's a prop. I'm not letting anyone use it after the great karaoke catastrophe of 44. Okay, yes. It's for some clients. Ha! Well, we don't have any tapes. They all got stolen. <laughs> the man in the vest and the violet shirt stares at the tape you've just given him. He begins to frown. Hard. Fine, fine. Climb on that stage and do your thing. Just get out of my hair. I'll... I'm having it uninstalled, he mumbles to himself. We'll do that at night time. It'll be much better at night time, just before we go to bed. So, let's see if we can find anything out about the 8th Hardy Boy. It's you again. What is it? Do we need to bump up the rhetoric? Nearly at a skill point.
I'm wondering if Clashier might reveal what I need. But I think she requires a volition check, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not going back to the harbour without the information I need, so we need to figure out a way of doing it somehow. This window is pristine on the smooth as ice following your lead. Yeah. There's no... Um... We need to ask more about that window. I was just thinking, what a nice day for questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Yeah. Ah, uh, here we go. I did not. Mystery solved then. I kept wondering where it led. There may be more to this mystery at some later time. She's holding back. Let's make a mental note for now. Huh. This isn't good. She's straight as a stick, suddenly. A peephole? You mean like a hole in the wall? Yes. Looking into your bedroom, miss. Okay. Digital fear and disgust moves through her body, beginning from her shoulders and ending in her hips. The cigarette tastes foul to her now. Do you think this is somehow connected to me? Okay. Do you have any way of knowing how long it has been there? Unfortunately, no. But if I were to guess, long enough. The perforation is under the bookshelf on your wall. It should not be hard to cover with some tape. Shit. I don't know. Maybe it's been there for a long time. Maybe the local kids use it or something. I don't know. I'll be fucking covering it up with a lot of tape, that's for sure. Was there anything else back there? Okay. I'm glad someone's had fun. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Not my favorite topic, but okay. Nothing new we, there? You know, change the... Yes, miss. I hope you don't mind. I'd better not. All right. Coolie. Gracefully, she pours herself more coffee. Yes. Good. Yes. This means she could have heard something. Like what you were doing before you blacked out. You do not need to know that. What you need is to ask normal police questions. Like... Get a grip, he thinks. At least do your personal... Quick, say something professional. Sure. The wreck. All right, that was a largely pointless exercise. So I think the tightest one is probably the one, right? That's the one we want to go for. Because I think he is... He's the one that's going to give us a bit more information. He knows who the eighth party is, right? Um, the window is also a key part of the investigation. Is there anything I can do over this side that will help me out? Oh, hang on, I, I've got an idea. So if we go somewhere private, so you can't do the signatures out in the open. You can do it within the privacy of your room. <laughs> yeah, the Kim hasn't been in here, has he? Uh, 
time. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. A 12 to 40 month construction period and the zoning plan in the addendum. Let me just make sure, is there anything I can do to boost interfacing? These are already boosting it. Anything affecting it? Just the gloves. I see something to try. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I was going to save scum it. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. A 12 to 40 month construction period and the zoning plan in the addendum. With a confident flourish, you complete your forgery. What do you see on the signature line? Indeed, they look distinctly different and very convincing. These might as well be their actual signatures. Good. Evart will have to start over with his scheming. When Isabelle and Lillian dispute the signatures, the document will be rendered null and void. Any halfway competent notary should be able to handle this. Not getting their actual signatures was probably the best thing to do. Now all we have to do is mail these. I think I saw a mailbox on the plaza. Nicely done. So we can at least tick that off. And then we'll get some more information about our gun, which is actually also handy for going over to the fishing village anyway. Get a nice big 70 XP, I reckon, for delivering on that forever art. So here's the mailbox. This Postler Van Torrie mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. A closer inspection reveals two bullet holes in the front. A faint sticker on the side reads, RCM Emergencies Desk number 8102, with a slogan, Mankind, be vigilant. So if anyone follows the Twitter account, um, can you pet the dog? It said no for a Disco Elysium. However, you can pat the box. Good mail delivery. Or you can kick it. <laughs> Added it with my tear bag, which the box looked seems weird. Happy. <laughs> Eat shit, pig. Fucked by the coon. And sent G with a crown have been scribbled on it. Jenny is a whore. And best set mailbox also. Been there. <laughs> the mail collection box seems cathartic, thankfully, even. So do you. You shudder, then you swallow, <laughs> and then suddenly you see it. Over all the other graffitos, someone has, using the tip of a very sharp knife, cut the words Rivershaw forever. Thank you, Shivers. You drop the white envelope in the darkness. It lands with a soft thud on what sounds like a couple of letters. About a week's worth of mail as collected in there. They'll empty this very soon. Probably did the right thing. You can't trust that slug Everard. You know he's going to play you somehow. All right, let's go back to Everard. If we don't mention anything to him, he won't know before it's too late. Annoyingly, you can't... So, with the map now... You can fast travel from certain points. So there you go. I can travel now. I don't know why I didn't do that, actually, coming back to the waterfront earlier. But you can travel uh, to key locations. But you can't bloody travel to and from the harbour. I guess it's to avoid being able to cheese it at some point in the game.
I haven't seen Everard for a while, actually. Slug that he is. Mr. Dubois, I hear the meeting with Titus was a glowing success. That's such a relief. Titus can be a handful sometimes. Now, what can Everard Clare do for you today? The Golden Boy returns once more. Wonderful. Simply wonderful, Harry. Of course. I already knew this. My friend, the mailman, confirms the letter is on its way. You've done a great thing today. You've given the children of Martinez a future and proven to be a true man of the left. I can finally trust you now. You're in my inner circle. You too, Mr. Kitsuragi. We can talk about anything. The strike, the murder, your lost gun, nothing is off the table. See, forging that signature really paid off. Well done, sire. By guile and deceit, you're in. I did not, Harry. Although I am very, very glad he's dead. Why a war, of course? And what do you have to gain from a war? Victory, Mr. Kitsuragi. I have victory to gain. We are going to start a war with the Wild Pines group and win before they even realize there is a war. Harry, we outnumber them 1,500 to 1, and that's just Martin A's. With all the unions in Rebeshol, and with public opinion on our side, we can hold off two men, or 15 men, or even 50 men. The more they send, the worse it's going to look for them. They made a huge mistake hiring those guys. No one likes foreign mercenaries. The leftists hate them, the fascists hate them, even the moralists think they're in bad taste. <laughs> Except ultra-liberals, which happens to be me. Harry, there is no strike, only war. Class war. Or, in business terms, a dawn raid. Or wait. Is that when you still pay them something? Because we won't do that. We're not gonna give nothing. We're gonna take Terminal B away from them. The roads, the gates, the containers, that big crane, even the damn coffee maker. We're gonna take all of it for the people and fuck Wild Pines. The word fuck rings like a gunshot from his mouth. He doesn't swear often. So that's why you haven't let Joyce in? Yes. It's also why I let that midget Gourmand go. He's too nice. I can't put him through this. Plus, he knows how to get in here. That woman can't tell her tits from her asshole. She has no chance. Tits from her asshole. It's a local saying. <laughs> I love that that's what the what triggered because him to say. Because we're friends, Harry. Besides, it doesn't matter now. You can go tell her if you want. It won't change the course of events. We have a significant head start. It's already happening. Two thousand three hundred and seventy-two, plus yours truly, of course. Two thousand three hundred and seventy-three is a sizable contingent for a labor organization in Revachon. Oh, you mean what sort of goods are going to be flowing through? How am I going to replace all the contacts we'll lose once the poo-poo hits the fan? The clients will ditch us. Harry, we've thought of everything. We've been running back channel negotiations with all the major clients. I think the company will be unpleasantly surprised to see how many of them stay loyal to Martin A's and to the new competitive contracts we can offer. With renewed zeal sparked by communal ownership, the men will be shipping those containers double time. You'll be surprised to see how fast things go without parasites latching on. We'll have our hands free to pursue bold exotic new revenue streams. That's drugs. Drug trafficking. Drug trafficking? Don't be stupid, Mr. Kitsuragi. There are perfectly legal, 100% ethical chemical factories on the Samarin Isola. You don't need to be colonialist about it. All they do is produce components to keep the pharmaceutical industry running. That's people's health we're talking about. Old grannies, little babes, people with disabilities, 
Like a true charlatan, he always paints it up like he's doing everyone a favour, doesn't he? The company thinks transporting these chemicals in bulk looks bad, has bad optics, may be illegal in some countries. The Debardes Union, however, we're all about the large volume column. We're going to transport the living daylights out of those materials, Harry. So your sick kid can get his benefit and your wacky uncle doesn't have to come off Risperazole. <laughs> and the kids on the street can get speed and pyrolidon. I'm an old-fashioned guy, Mr. Kitsuragi. I sometimes grab a beer with the boys, but I have no idea about the things you just mentioned. <laughs> but if I were to supply ingredients for some sort of rainbow party, I would make sure the union took a fantastic share, and I'd keep that stuff far away from Martinez. Yes, yes, of course. And while you're doing that, please go ahead and also tell the Wild Pines. I want to hear them squeal from the indignity. Nothing in his features betrays any concern. Yeah, he doesn't care, does he? He doesn't give a shit about the RCM. Anyway, let's not focus on the sensationalism of the drug trade. This hypothetical drug trade is all anyone ever seems to be interested in. It would only be a small part of the harbour's turnover, just like the harbour is, but a small part of Martin A's. Let's look at the big picture. Martin A's as a whole. There are little girls out there with dreams of making music. Young mothers who want to start businesses. Models who want to walk catwalks and steel welders who want to weld steel. I'm going to unite them all into one economic body. We're going to incorporate this place to kingdom come. Everyone's going to be in on the wealth. And everyone's going to pull their weight. Let's keep focusing on the drug trade. He was almost admitting to it. No, no, Harry. That's boring. All right, it's gone. The hypothetical raw materials trade is off the table. It's such a small and insignificant slice of revenue, I'm cutting it. Boys, Harry felt queasy about it. We're not doing it. Can we talk about my beautiful incorporated Martin A's and its many-sided business ventures now? This bold new vision of incorporated socialism I'm offering. Hmm, it's asking me to nail my colours to the mast here. Yes, if you start thinking about it like that, the socialist municipal body sort of is like a corporation, isn't it? It uses corporate law. We're incorporated. I like to think we're using the best parts of all the ideologies here, Harry. We're way past specific union members now. This is the big time. We're talking about the future of Revachol here, Harry. You can bother Leonard with that. He loves to run his mouth on such matters. But I'm in big time mode, Harry. Big time mode. <laughs> There's something different about him now. He's more vibrant. More alive in his big time mode. Harry, I've got to be honest with you. Your gun was found two days ago. Withholding this information weighed heavily on me, but it had to be done. An old woman has it, and let me tell you, Harry, word on the street is she's a character, so watch out. This must be the woman who bought the gun from Roy, the one he described as terrifying. Yes, the same one. I see you've done your research. The pawn shop made the gun easy to track. Crazy stuff, Harry. Selling your gun like that? Wild. Anyway, the neighbors of this old woman contacted my men because they trust me and the Debardeurs Union. Apparently, she was waving it around at the entrance to her building. Waving the gun around doesn't sound good. None of this does. As I said, she's a character. I didn't have time for details. It sounds like she's unstable, but don't worry. No one got hurt. Unstable is good, actually. She will be easier to disarm. No, wait. Actually, unstable is pretty bad. 
Yeah, I don't like unstable. Not with a gun involved. Unfortunately, I don't know anymore. You're gonna have to go in blind, Harry. But she's an old lady. How dangerous can she possibly be? Oh, and she calls herself the pigs. I, for one, find it refreshing. Finally, someone calls themselves a pig. It actually sounds extremely bad, but let's not give him the satisfaction. <laughs> I already have. Tonight, starting 10 o'clock, near the old fish market on the coast, the one on the boardwalk, a little past the fishing village. Be careful, Harry. I would never set you up for anything dangerous, but you did ask for this. Now, back to the fun stuff. I just realized, actually, I was meant to meet the smoker, was I not, at nine o'clock. Okay, as long as I do it after nine o'clock, it's still available. But that was Monday. What have I been playing at? So we got the pigs at 10. And the smoker at nine. You could probably do the smoker at nine and still get, get to the... So I think all you do is arrange to meet the Sunday friend with the smoker so it shouldn't take too long and we should be able to get over and meet the Shield pigs at 10 from 2200 hours till 0200 hours oh, okay so we're not locked to the 10 o'clock more fun stuff seems like we already have fun stuff to do great Harry great I think we have truly built a bridge between Martinez and Jamrock today. We have united the RCM and the Debardeurs Union. This has been so great. I'm sorry we don't have more fun things to do together, but if you ever feel like bouncing something off me, my door is always open. Thank you, Everart, for all of your wonderful assistance. You've been an absolute joy. So can I travel from here? No, see, it doesn't let you at all. It's quite annoying. I think I can do that here actually. Did it tell you? Uh, if you go to map, then you go to Titus, yeah, rhetoric. So, might as well go back here with an update, upgraded rhetoric anyway. For the cargo container. No rhetoric. Not far off another skill point anyway. How's that fort cabinet coming along? Rigorous self critique. Hour and thirty five left. You're back before the cargo container. It's God, that's not just... lessened since you were last here. And as it's always been, it's impossible to open a container with the rhetoric.
What was that? Three T's out of Fritter. <laughs> Not a big fan of the harbour music. It grinds on me a little bit. It's you again. What is it? This is still not. Hang on. Oh, clothing on that's impacting it. No, nope. got any clothing that can boost it? No. Shit. All right, we'll it's give it a go. Again. What is it? Convince Titus yes. is being manipulated. Bad idea. Bringing her up will do no good. You should know by now. Titus will never falter. Just remember, it's about more than Glazia. It's about these men and Martinez. Their district. Their responsibility. Outside, in the midday sun, ruins. The pavements are cracked and the benches peeling. Newspapers blow in the wind. Huh? He'll get it. Go on. Got it. Kill you because they don't like you. All because... Bring that up one more time and you won't get to write that report. Yes, I understand, Alain. That's your name, right? Alain? You'll kill us. That's what they do in the wild north. It wasn't that. It wasn't. We didn't shoot him. That's it. That's the weak one. You flushed him out. Now go in for the... Officer, you will be next if you don't shut up. Firearm, a glass zero eight or a thirty eight caliber pistol. Either is small enough for you to have missed. He's onto you. He knows what you're trying to do. Steal yourself. Push on. Just ignore Theo. We didn't kill him. We didn't even hang him. He was dead when... <laughs> Shut up, Angus! Fatty! Say one more thing to the cops and I'll... Dennis, stand down or I'll beat your head in. Theo, take your hand off the belt. This isn't 31. I've got this under control. Got ya, boys. Does he? His closed fist is shaking. It's you who's in control. Let them have their moment. <sighs> Angie, where's your goddamn inhaler? You sound like you're dying. I left it home. I can't get it. I'm too fucked. I'm sorry. Why are you so fucking fat, Angus? Now it's all pointless. Because of you. You wasted my time. I told you, Titus. I told you, just give her up. Lizzie, your help is no longer needed here. Go tell Ebrard. Fine, I'll tell him. After a long walk along the coast. That walk along the coast is more important than you think. You're in. He's all yours. Question. He 
notes. You hanged the corpse to cover up the real cause of death. The bullet in his head. Another nod. Because the girls asked us to. They were in some shit. Girls plural? There's another girl. Two of them. Take note of this. They'll probably say more about her later. Did she kill him? Cop, I have no idea. The girl says she didn't. Class J came down. She seemed really out of it. Drugged up, even more than usual. Bug-eyed and gurning, you know? Not in a fun way. It looked like she'd redosed after something went down. I've seen that look before. She was scared. I knew someone had died. I've done this job for ten years. I've seen it before. It's the politician in the motel room with the dead hooker scenario. Only in reverse. Good analogy, boss. <laughs> you don't get to talk yet, Shanky. You're still on the bench. And you keep taking it easy, too, Angus. We went upstairs. Sure as day the Merc was dead. And there was a bullet hole through the window. That fucking... Dirty sheets and bottles everywhere. Window. He means they've been fucking. Tibbs patched the window and the corpse. We hanged. Nah, he's my brother. He's in the window replacement business. You may have noticed our girls in some shit of her own. Yeah, she wouldn't. She's fucked if she shows up on police radar. They're powerful, connected to the moral intern. She's clearly afraid for her life. Says if she showed up in your systems, she'd be ghosted away. That's all he knows. That's all she's told him. And why would you help someone like that? By taking on a murder? Why would I? I guess we abide all sorts of runaways and losers here. It's a Martinez thing. Not yet. Just some ideas. She says the shot came from outside, behind the window somewhere. So that's a clue. I'm thinking someone's past caught up with them. Either hers or his. Hers, you mean? I mean the people after Klausia. Maybe the shot missed. Maybe it was meant for her. I like that. Been thinking the same thing myself. My dude. One of those mercenary buddies of his could have done it. They got guns. Training. Years of bad blood, probably. Or it could have been someone else from Trinell. Tell you what I'd do. Check out the coast for vantage points. Maybe consult with a ballistics buddy of mine. That's what I'd do, if I wasn't too busy doing this clown dance with you. He's calm now, threw all that turmoil away, and became himself again. In a manner of speaking. Remember the two girls? He may be talking about the other one. That's right. It was her idea to hang him. I liked it, for political reasons. It sent a good message. Fella, you think too much. He's off all right. You're gonna hurt your head. That woman is just affiliated with the Hardy Boys. You don't know her, anyway. We're Hardy Boys. And that's it. Nope. You're not getting to her. It's Klausia you want to talk to. You do that. Hey, cop. Before you go. Suddenly, the wind picks up outside. You hear it rattling the large windows in their frames. It carries newspapers, circles the whirling in rags in a warm column. She, Klausia, came to Martinez to hide. Many of us did. This is where you wash up when there's nowhere left to go. The Union takes you in. Now, she... 
refused that protection. But... That's right. If we didn't take care of the people who end up here, this place would just be a couple of ruins and some cargo containers. We'll take that into account. There's some honor there, isn't there? They want to look after the people who are down and out. And if it's a sanctuary for people like that, then you have to maintain that level of sanctuary for those people. And the minute you don't, the minute Clasio is turned over, what is Martinez then? As Titus says, it's nothing. Martinez is defined by the sanctuary it offers to people like that. It's always good to see you. Something in her demeanor has changed. She's tired, consigned to her fate, to being here with you and what's to come. I understand. Just like that, no resistance. Her shoulders are slouched, her feet long and straight. I know. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. For all of this, for wasting your time. This is good. Clear the air first, between you two. Then move on to questions. Is it? Something is off here. Shush, I can't hear what she's saying. <laughs> Why did you waste our time then? Because of the Hardys. I couldn't just dispense with them. They were only trying to help me. Out of the shit I'd gotten into. You're right. There's more. You answer to the coalition government, and by extension, the moral intern. Briefly glancing over her shoulder to the sea, as she's done time and time again. A grand expanse of water reaches over the bay and to the horizon. Golden gray in the noon light. The pearl, the Buindi Isola, the Occident, and then Oranje, the old, old world. You share a database with them. You send people to their courts. I have people after me, and they have friends in the moral intern. Some are moral intern. If I show up in your records, officer, they will find me. They will. What happens if they do? They will kill me, sir. If you file my name, take me in for questioning, enter me into the moral intern mill. So it's a, a, a dilemma because, I mean, it's a very good way for a slick criminal to prevent being arrested. But if you remember... When we arrest people in the RCM, we issue an arrest slip, so they have to turn up to um, the station when asked. Hopefully, we can go with that option because it's somewhere in between. Because there is also the very real possibility we could be sending her to a death if we arrest them. Well, then I'm fucked for nothing. This murder didn't have anything to do with me. It's not nice, but it's not illegal. Not here in Ravishol, or even in Oranje. What exactly did you do? Industrial espionage. I joined a business collective with the intention of betraying them. I did my job well enough to be asked to do it again. With a bigger company. The kind you really, really don't fuck with. I took their ledgers. Two decades worth of accounting. So she's basically telling us how good a liar she is. She was able to um, infiltrate and pretend in a big corporation so well that she was asked to do it again. I need the names of the companies involved and who hired you. The job was Lou's doing County Savings Bank. They sound small, but they're part of the Lou Scop conglomerate. That was the second job. The first was some printer company. You wouldn't know them. As to who hired me for the job, I don't know. But they're after me too. Along with Luscop and their friends in the MI. 
Once you're done in the competitive intelligence circuit, you don't have allies. You're radioactive. It is. Many people lost their jobs. Not just C-suite. Ordinary people. What I A lot of people got hurt. But that's just more of my shit you shouldn't have to deal with. You're solving a murder. We were there. Together. In bed, I mean. Okay. He was in a kneeling position. He had just entered me. I was on my back, looking at him. I heard the window behind me shatter, and I turned to look. There was a hole in the glass. I turned back to him. His eyes were looking through me, and his mouth was open, dumb. I could see. I could. Her chest rises and falls with each word. She keeps herself together and says it. I knew he was dead before he fell down on top of me. He was heavy. I pushed him off and he fell to the floor. There. He only had his boots on. I bit the pillow, not to scream, then ran downstairs. I waited for the second shot to come. For me. I thought there would be one. It never came. She's forgotten about her cigarette. The butt has burned right down to her fingernails. Oh. So am I. What time was this? When did it happen? It would help us if you could be as precise as possible. 11.30 to 12.15. I don't know the exact time. Around midnight. It's okay. Were you inebriated? Not as much as usual. He'd done a line, plus other things. I was drinking. Wait. Titus said she was gurning her jaw off much more than usual. Oh, yeah. I did one of his lines, just to clear my head. Did you hear or see the shooter in the course of this? No. Nothing. I was trapped. I was stuck in my room downstairs. I got some clothes on and crawled back up, drew the blinds. Blood was coming from his mouth. Not a lot, just a little. He was still on the floor, slouched. I couldn't be there with him anymore. So I ran down and out of my room, into the hallway, down the stairs. I knew there would be people there. Sylvie was tending the bar. A lot of people were there. The Hardys were at the table in front of the stage. I think the union box was full. Ruby was there too. They were having such a good time. I sat down and they all welcomed me. I didn't even have to say anything. Ruby knew something was wrong. Ruby? Ruby. You know, the leader. Ding, 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 ding! The leader? Of what? The Hardy Boys. Well, nominally, yes. Ruby's the one they go to when things happen, like things they need taken care of. She's the organizer. Would you say she is the eighth Hardy Boy? Why not? Well, Ruby said let's talk upstairs. I showed her the room. I've known these people since December. They know my situation. But I can't leave a paper trail. Ruby was the first one I told. She said she'd take care of this. It's what she does, you know, take care of things. I helped her get the body to the bathroom. We used a belt to pull him up under the shower to keep him upright. To mislead you, they were tampering with the body. To produce lividity, matching a hanging? Yes. We completely missed the tampering. Looks like you got there in time. What was this, 20 minutes after death? About 20, yes. Ruby explained it would make the blood... You know what he does. Ruby went outside to talk to Titus and the boys. I was just looking at Lely in the bathroom. 
had to put his clothes back on. His armor, too. It was tough, but I've seen him take it off and put it on many times. It took Ruby maybe half an hour to come back with Titus. I'd gotten him ready by then. He carried him out. I knew what they were going to do, make it look like a hanging. Ruby said they would. Ruby said to wait here. She also said I wouldn't see her for a while, that we should lay low or something. So I did. I don't know. I haven't seen her since. We will need to take this question to the Hardy Boys. Interesting. Why did this Ruby go through so much trouble to hide something someone else did? Look into this later. When he was shot? I may have. I don't know. I couldn't hear anything over the glass exploding. The gunshot wasn't that loud. This is something to keep in mind when assessing the distance of the shot. What? Why would I put myself through this? Insanity. Get myself cornered like this. He wouldn't have died if it weren't for me. I know that. But I would never hurt him. He was a serviceman. He must have had a gun lying around. Close to her hand. A military weapon using jacketed ammunition. Now, you guys suddenly have theories pouring out. <laughs> when they're obviously just stabs in the dark. I'm sad to hear that. They must have said it in some fit of frustration or under pressure. They couldn't have meant it. I've talked to them after it happened. No one has implicated me. No. I specifically asked him not to carry firearms when he was with me. He only had his stupid armor. I don't know. His friends have rifles. Maybe those psychos did it. Coalition military have rifles. I'm not a munitions expert. And I did not shoot him. She might have been a tad disingenuous when she avoided talking about the bullet in his head before. Look who's waking up from a thousand years of sleep. <laughs> I love that Violation is like the dad of them all, keeping them in check. And wondering where the fuck they've been all this time. I've said I'm sorry. What more do you want me to say? I did my best not to lie. It didn't always work. It my best not to lie. Lying is a completely voluntary thing, young lady. Like what? That's the first thing that went through my head when I heard the glass break. I thought they'd found me. They've killed him to punish me. All last week, I've tried not to talk to anyone or be seen with anyone. so they wouldn't be hurt. I've come to understand, however, this is paranoia. What happened didn't have anything to do with me. We can't go after Loose Cap, not yet. There are other, saner leads. I don't ask you to, Lieutenant. But there's one thing I know, is that you'll get nothing from there. Because I'm an idiot. Which is an indicator of truth. Idiot. She's nothing of the sort. No, she's not. She knew how to uh, damage the phone. Um, she's uh, very good at corporate espionage. She's given us the run around. She's given the Hardy Boys a run around. Not, she's not an idiot at all. You have to understand the people around here. No one was making the call and he kept rotting. And then they picked his clothes off and that little fucker threw stones at him. Her jaw is clenched. Her throat moves. It takes all her strength not to cave in and sob. Once. Just one time. He kept throwing stones at him for three days. I could hear the thud. Thud. So I called you. I hope with all my heart it's not the last thing I do in Ravishol. She definitely called the cops. That was task complete. It could not have been a lie. That is impossible. 
last week, Angus and Titus's brother, I think he's called Tibbs, took care of it. You should have another look at that window after this. Reconstruct the scene. It's right there. Yes, you see the glass sparkling out of the corner of your eye. She nods silently. She doesn't even smoke. Just picks up the cold coffee and holds it in her hands. Um... He's thinking, are we done here? Or maybe you should take her to the station for safekeeping. She lied to you, and she's a flight risk. No, that won't be necessary. Just leave her alone. She's been through enough. She doesn't need this police brutality. Multiface, I'm beginning to doubt your judgment. Are you sure you're not sleeping on the post? You have to wake this one up with force if you want to continue pushing her. Oh, hang on a sec. Is it a red check? No, it's a white check. Who? What? Dear God, you've been lied to. She could have killed her lover and lied to everyone. She's not candid at all. She smoke and mirrors and willow wisps. She probably didn't give you her real name either. Why would she? Arrest her immediately before she further entangles you in her web of lies. I agree. You wouldn't give us your real name, not when people are after you. Okay. Okay, it's not. You log your work every week. It's all transmitted to common, sir. I couldn't just beg you not to enter my name. So I lied. Like I lied before. Like I did at LCSB. I have to lie all the time. I'm so tired of it. No. It's submerged in a plastic boy on the coast, in the reeds. It just... doesn't say Clausia Amandu. It says Anuk Mea Smith. Falsified documents? Passport and visa. Given to me by my employer. I can't even use them. My employer probably leaked the name, Maya Smith, to hurt me. Why would they do that? I didn't show up to a rendezvous. They don't take that lightly. I didn't show up because I was afraid they'd do something to me. The job was finished. I'm just a liability now. West of the boardwalk, in the reeds, on the coast there. I put it there when I first arrived. Haven't been there since. I'm not sure I could even find it now. It's useless. The lieutenant makes a note of it. You're welcome to it. It's in the reeds northwest of here, past the Bergen sewage pipe, right near the water line. It's Katarzyna Lazie. She nods. Her round eyes meet yours. They seem moist from the wind on the roof. So Lizzie went for a walk down the coast, remember? And her passport and documents are on the coast. I am. They can never take my sash and my scepter from me. Yes, they can, for lying. <laughs> she nods, her back straight, ready for whatever is next. There may be grounds here, at least for an extended detention. A little whimper. The young woman hears you. She's looking around. But I haven't done anything. Anything illegal. She purposefully misrepresented information crucial to the case. I am not going to arrest her. Fucking mind games. Enough. That's right, gang. Stern and merciless now. Stern and merciless as we reel her in. The lieutenant produces a pair of handcuffs. Please, no. But there's nowhere to go. A two-story drop to the Plaza Mosaic. If she could, she would have run before. I think I know who did it. Who shot Lely. I can tell you. I can help you. She knows something. She's silent for a second, as if looking into herself for certainty. Then, 
in a hushed voice. She says, Ruby. She has this thing for me. Ever since I met her and the boys downstairs. She's been pretty frank about what she wants. So, if you remember, the truck had lots of posters of girls. Sex. And more. I made the mistake of confiding in her. I told her I was on the run. She started protecting me. It became an unhealthy relationship. When I started spending time with Lely, she told me to end it. She said there would be shit if I didn't. It was not a good meeting. We stopped. I don't understand. What exactly in your relationship made you think she is romantically interested in you? She said she's in love with me. She even asked me to run away with her when I told her I'm a fugitive. She started developing notions about our relationship. And you led her on? A little. I was flattered, you know? But then I had to let her off, and it was not easy. I came to regret being friendly with her. We maybe kissed, nothing more. I know what it sounds like. That's why I didn't want to tell you before. But she knew what had happened when I came downstairs. Somehow, she knew Lely was dead. She wasn't surprised at all. When we came up here, she was calm as a stone, too. She cleaned it all up like she had a plan. Bullshit. This is a familiar theory. You had it, too, remember? Could it be that Ruby was covering up after herself? The lynching. No one heard the gunshot. You said there was a secret route there, right? She could have come up through there, then taken the shot right here, where I stand. It was too dark outside. I wouldn't have seen her. Then slipped back downstairs without anyone noticing. That is possible. Interesting theory. Did she know that door exists? Had you been out there with her? Yes. She's been up here many times. She used to come to drink on the roof when... Uh... The people. My bed is right next to... She would have seen us. You mean to suggest she made it? No. No. Why would she do that to herself? No, I, I just remembered you told me about it and... She's not really sure. It was right above the bed. She could have seen all sorts of things from there. She came over one night, drunk, said she'd turn my life into a living hell. I've been threatened before, so I can tell when someone knows how to do it. And she's a pro. She must be. To keep the hardies in line. I tried severing ties with her after that. I thought it had worked, but... Some of that fear is still with her. She exhales sharply. What are you talking about? She's afraid you'll arrest her. Okay, and what? Arrest the liar now. She's stuck here. She's already in prison. Look around. She's only trying to help you. Her. Stop letting her distract you. Do you know what? I'm so annoyed at the level that she's lied to me. I've changed my mind. She's she's clever. So she didn't hear the gunshot, but apparently it happened right here. And as someone who's very manip manipulative and clever, she used the information we gave her, not, what, an hour ago about a peephole. Don't know. There, there, there are benefits to not arresting her. Still, 
After all this, sir, please. It's a shitty world, and but I don't deserve to be sent to the moral intern and ground into paste just because I disturbed the sanctity of accounting. That's some multinational... She's gearing up for a last stand. This is it. Actually, I'm investigating... A, I, I'm just going all over the place here. I'm investigating a murder, and she didn't do the murder. You have those station calls, right? Where I have to show up at the That's station. That's what I want to do. Fugitive. So I can get out of you can write the me decision. One. You don't have to take me in right now. I promise I won't go out anymore at night. I'll be right here. I know you can do that. Just let me come in on my own. In two months. Or maybe even one month. That's all I need. I do have a farm. By God, she's playing in too. Like a fiddle, sire. Who would have known? Everything could change. This city, the extradition rules, the people after me could be in jail. Or maybe Ravishal. Maybe Ravishal could be free. I could be tried in a free Ravishal. An independent state that in doesn't have to take you to the moral intern. A free Ravishal. There is a low, distant rumble on the motor track. A great machine shaking the pillars down south. Electricity runs up your spine. I find that hard to believe, miss. It's coming. Don't. The world can change. It has changed before. That's not the answer she was hoping for. Thought that you were some kind of patriot or communard. Did she? She looks at you in silence, her face filled with fear, lips parted. Wait. If you arrest her, Kim will have to transport her. You'd be without your partner for the rest of the day. Shut up. He's making a decision, and it's his to make. I won't. This may have been a grave mistake, sire. Possibly. I promise I will be right here all the time, nights too. I'll help you any way I can in this investigation, and I will be at Station 41 in six weeks. I promise. She slowly, slowly lights another cigarette and steadies her breath, as if in the presence of some tiger. You are. This is not the end of this. <laughs> Snowing, so it doesn't work. Interesting. Rigorous self critique. Here it is hard facts from the man you are. You once jerked off in the locker room and were caught. You <laughs> held a young woman by the arm and kept her in your apartment for 20 minutes against her will. That's right. These are not flights of fancy. These are real deeds, Harry, emerging from the darkness of your past. You tried shooting a fleeing suspect in the foot, but hit him in the pelvis, crippling him for life. And above all, you let life defeat you. All the gifts your parents gave you. All the love and patience of your friends. You drowned in a neurotoxin. You let misery win. And it will keep on winning till you die. Or overcome it. Wow, that was deep. So what's the bonus? Ooh. Intellect. And Psyche, red check failures, heal, plus one, morale. Physique and Motrix, red check failures, heal, plus one, health. And the learning cap for pain threshold, raised to six. Mostly pointless, to be honest. Because I never really uh, am sure on health and morale. But I suppose... Actually, it will come in handy a little bit later in the game. Thinking about it. Should 
come in handy later. So you will see later why I didn't arrest her. Okay? It seems like a really stupid decision to let her um, just get away with a station call because she has bullshitted quite a lot and she is a criminal and she said it's on the run around I mean the, the reasons for arresting her far outweigh the reasons for not but there is a small benefit which I like this getting. window is pristine on the inside unlike the one next to it light from the desk lamp reflects off the glass in an untarnished golden halo golden light melts away into the blue glassy darkness of your mind in it are two neon lit shapes a man and a woman on the single bed like the witness said the man is kneeling the woman is on her back it's the night of March 4th and a shot has just been fired so there is point A, where we are, okay? Martinez. B3, B2, B1, points of trajectory. We know, so you come down here, fishing village, okay? We know that there's a church over here, right? And you can access all of that. This here is the little elet where the old uh, shipping yards are and the, the old collapsed buildings. Okay. So one of those points is where the shot came from. Which would suggest, of course, the idea that Ruby could have run upstairs, took the shot without really alerting anyone and then run back down and pretend like she knew everything is ridiculous the man looks directly at the woman the shot's possible directions converge in his mouth a ray cast from somewhere outside entering his brain from the roof outside location a prime the glass fractures around the bullet hole shards face inwards like a corona behind the woman's back the man does not know the bullet has entered his brain. He never will. Death comes faster than the realization. The ray cast from the man's mouth unravels into a fan of possible directions, all on the roof at first. The shot could have come from any of them. This is composite location A prime, most likely of the origin points. Oh, okay, sorry, my mistake. A prime is the rooftop um trajectory of the bullet not the location of the shot but i still think it's ridiculous but then i would because i completed the game so <laughs> there could have been then the rain and slush and wind washed it away this was more than a week ago 72 percent with an antique weapon that fires military grade ammunition a belma grave rifle for example this is a good short distance but not too short the perpetrator aimed with their back against the railing, or possibly kneeling for precision. This would explain why it only took them one shot. The lights were on in here. Outside it was dark. It was like shooting fish in an aquarium. A well-lit aquarium. The victim opened his mouth to let the bullet in. Neither of them would have seen anything outside in the darkness. Too busy with their own bodies. Point X would contradict the woman's testimony, rendering the entire proposition void. These figures would be wiped out, Detective. None that you've found thus far, but that doesn't mean there aren't any. That's a 28%, yes. In this model, the shot could have come from a greater distance. Nothing excludes the possibility. Should we extrapolate to include every possible point of origin in Martinez? Yes. According to your map of the district, this shot could have come from a wide angle of locations, starting with the northern edge of the abandoned boardwalk, 
ending with an islet in the bay. Let's call them B prime. B prime for boardwalk, B double prime for land's end, and B triple prime for the islet, detective. 700 meters away, the likeliest of these B positions, 20% chance. A skilled sniper could have made the shot, provided he had a safe sniper's nest. Even with the light on inside, we're talking military training. At that distance, the perpetrator would have had to take wind direction into account. 1.2 kilometers away, the least likely of these positions. Let's say 3%. A truly skilled sniper could have done it, possibly from a tent. No, too far-fetched. One kilometer away, a point beyond the docks, on an islet in the bay. The fort is ruined, but the perpetrator may have found a stable spot on the beaches surrounding it, where the concrete crumbles into the sea, as you saw in the coin-operated viewer. The shot would have been a small miracle, 5% likelihood. There is an extremely narrow field of view from the bay to the window, between Rue de saint Gislen 10 and 33A. The angle would have been extreme, and access to the islets is questionable. From where, precisely? I see you have given this a lot of thought. Are those the locations you've singled out in addition to the roof? And what is the likelihood, in your opinion, that it came from a further distance? Okay, well. We should see if there is gunshot residue or sniper nest if we go down the coast. Roll these spots out one by one. It would be the diligent thing to do. Until then, personally, I'm going with the roof version. It fits the hidden path through the whirling. A simple hypothesis. There we have it. They are the points of origin for the shot. And we've got all kinds of information now at two o'clock in the afternoon on day three. What was a simple trip back to confirm the name of the eighth Hardy being Ruby. That's the information I wanted for the fishing village. We ended up unraveling the entire case and finding out all kinds of stuff went down. So I'm going to wrap it up there, but uh, make sure you check back on Point and Griff for part 14 of the playthrough, where we'll go back to the fishing village. Um, not before speaking to the Hardy boys about some of the information we've got from Clochier or whatever the hell her name is. Um, and then we'll see what else we can find on the other side of the canal. Until then, I uh, hope to see you again soon. See you later.